Hello, everybody! It is Wednesday! How are we tonight? How are we this Wednesday night? Do, 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 do. There we are. Hey, hey, Kitty, Michelle, Jennifer, hello! Angela, how are we doing tonight? Krita! Sorry, I was running more ish than 8 tonight. How am I doing on time? Where was I? 8.10? I don't have my glasses on. 8.10. Sylvia, Dennis, Tamika, live Tamika? That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great to have you all here. How is everybody this? Hump day! It is hump day! It is Wednesday, people. We're doing it. We're marching our way through this week. We're marching right through this week. Boom! We're going right through it. Yes, we are. Right to the other side. Russell Levy is with us tonight. Leanne. Cheers to you, Leanne. Cheers. Great to have you all here. Oops, I didn't scroll my feed on this. Ola tonight. That sounds like you're eating dinner already, Dennis, and couldn't get out the whole howdy. How is everybody tonight? What are we grateful for this Wednesday, this hump day? What are we grateful for? Tell me about it, people. It is Wednesday. It feel like, felt like in a lot of ways full moon Wednesday, okay? We had a lot of weird today, you know, just too much weird. Uh, and I understand people are stressed and just tired of being cooped up and everything else, but we just had our more than our, more than our fair share of weird today. I, and I just didn't need it. <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to play. How's that? How's that? I didn't want to play. So what is everybody grateful for this Wednesday? Wednesday, June 24th. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Hey, Julie Jankowitz. Howdy from Albuquerque on the treadmill. I feel like I saw something else from your area today, Kelly, and I'm trying to remember what it was. My day is sort of a fog. Uh, grateful for an... Uh, hang on a second, Tamika. That is sounded really good. Tamika, I'm glad that you were able to pause and be present. That is awesome. Hey, Michelle. How are you? Whoa, Mandy! Send me back! 30% of your sales were online today! Boom! Kitty's having a beautiful evening. I love watching the online sales come in. But you gotta keep in mind, one thing to keep in mind with your online sales is don't just count the sales that are happening on your website. So many of you are like, oh, I only get a couple orders a day, or I got this many this week, or this month that's not the measurement of your website in full because it drives it drives people to your store it drives brick and mortar business big time okay <laughs> you watched june 16th did you <laughs> oh my it's okay, Kelly. I, I, are you saying I'm boring or I'm consistent? I'm kind of unsure on where I, where, where I am on that. Um, or are you saying I ha I'm still wearing the same shirt from June 16th? I'm really not sure what you're saying. <laughs> but it, it's all good. I, 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 I take it all that way. So that is awesome. But don't forget that not all your website sales come from your website. They walk in because of what they saw on your website. It is my favorite to hear, oh, I saw this online before I went to bed last night, and I'm here first. I'm your first customer, and I'm here to buy it. And yeah, well, your friend saw it uh, last night, too, 
and they bought it, so it's sold. I don't know why uh, June 16th showed up tonight, but hey, I am glad I'm consistent. I think consistency in general is a good thing. Slow, steady pace on the incline. Go, and we're, we're, we're going to increase. We're going to make our changes. And I'm consistently late, I'm told, too. But I had an arts board meeting before this, so I've been narding all night. Narding all night? Okay. I need to wear your glasses. It's all, it's all good. I'm glad to hear all these great things. I am glad to hear that sales are good. I'm glad to hear that it's a beautiful evening. We had another good day of sales today, even with the full moon wackos out today. Um, we had one person claim it, it was really good today. So one of our wacky situations today at one of our stores was they, um, they overheard an employee saying they wouldn't help a customer, okay? And at the time they made this complaint, okay, well, they, that they said they were in store at this time, okay, the only two employees were Cassandra and the other employee, okay, who is in college, her goal is to become a Disney princess. I mean, no kidding, no fooling, that is her goal, is to get it accepted into Disney princess training. She has been working her whole life for this. So for her to say, I won't help you, just not going to happen. Not going to happen from Cassandra. So it's been that kind of wacky day. Um, hey, Angie. You know, we had an employee who, I'm like, who are you? And, and uh, uh, you know, looking for me today, a former employee named Ashley, which, you know, we had one that didn't return who, uh, of her own choice. But this was another Ashley that we employed last year. I went and looked it up. She earned a total of $100 from us last year. And supposedly I haven't filled out some unemployment form so she can collect unemployment now. And I'm like, you quit then. So it's just been that kind of wacky day. Exactly. It, it is not an instantaneous on switch, Mandy, when you turn on your website. But that is great that you are making a slow climb. And Nebraska Angie's with us. Lisa's with us in Maryland. That is great. I love all this good news. Let's open up the Good Morning, Good Night book. It's how we start the program every night. Every night is how we start this. Oh, I like this. I opened up tonight. Kitty, who's the only other one of you that has a copy of this, the only other one. I'm going to have to sign that copy. You know, maybe maybe it'll be worth something someday, Kitty. You can eBay it. The world changes. The ground shifts. We still make plain plans. We still find gifts. Good morning. That is our good morning tonight on page 96, Kitty. Page 96. No, my good one is at Disney. My good one doesn't... That still works it with me, Adele. Um, is is her goal is to be a Disney princess. She's nice and kind to everybody. She doesn't walk around with a wand, but she's nice and kind to everybody. She's not the best at any particular task in the store, but friendly she's got down. She's always the friendliest person in our building. So uh, we love her for that. You got a copy, Lisa? I did not know that. That is awesome. That is great. I love all this, how I am inspiring book sales here. Lynn manuel Miranda's got to start paying me royalties. It appears some of you were not with us the other night, okay, when we added to our set, okay? And, and we added, um, we have a sponsored set of our set now, okay? A and some of you did not see that, so... We have, for the scotch, and, and some of you do not see this, is we have this cool Resale World coaster, okay, which is cool in and of itself. It's nice hard, got a nice marble-type finish to it. To, from our friends at Resale World, okay, wanted me to have a nice place to put down the scotch glass, okay, and, uh, and it is. It, it rests the... Whoa, hang on a second. If I don't drop it... 
the scotch glass rests very nicely on it, okay? Um, you can see that there. But wait, there's more. They sent more to the set. Hang on a second. What's that in my water? They sent a resale world frosted mug, which is pretty darn cool in and of itself, okay? Pretty darn cool resale world frosted mug. Okay, but they put the ECI Stores logo on it because you know you email me when you want to reach me. Neil at ECIStores.com. Neil at ECIStores.com. A one-of-a-kind frosted mug. I thought this was a perfect scotch mug, personally. My production team informed me that I was not allowed to use it for scotch because it is too deep. So... I, I am not allowed to use that glass for scotch, but I am allowed to have it on my set for water or use it for coffee or other beverages that do not contain alcohol, that do not contain alcohol is what my production team informed me because the depth of the beautiful, beautiful mug, I mean, I mean, it, it is a great addition to our set here, both the mug and, and truly the lovely coaster. From our friends, friends of the of the resale industry, who have been supporting um, so many businesses through this and getting them to the other side, I actually even have one a a business they are supporting is in the news tonight. Okay, so we're going to come to that. They get two things. So thank you to our friends at Resale World for adding to our set. Um, you can have things added to the set. You know where to send it to ecistores.com. We'll add it to the set. Um, I feel like I need something back here. I don't know what. But whoever did design that does have a great deal of talent. I don't think there's just like a website where you click and point or anything. I mean, but that took some real talent there. All right, our word to inspire tonight is because, you know, playing off of our whole hospitality theme that we talked about last night, oh, uh, my octopus, yes. Okay, playing off the uh, whole theme we talked about last night that we're really in the hospitality business, not the clothing, not the furniture, not the purse business, but the hospitality business, show up to give. Show up to give is my uh, inspirational quote of the night. So, one of the funny things that came across my desk today, okay, funny or not, or just something that, you know, a lot of us haven't really thought about, is we've been dealing with our stores frozen in March, okay? Our stores, you know, as we've gone to reopen, many people's stores have been frozen in March. We talked about Burlington Coat Factory clearancing everything because their stores were frozen in March. What about offices? Have you thought about that? You left work one day thinking you'd return. Okay, maybe you're not going to return the next day, but next week? I mean, three, four, five, six months later, you're not going to get to return to your office? I share this because my nephew, or my oldest nephew, works for a tech company in San Francisco. San Fran, that's the one with the bridge. Yes. Not San Diego, where Narts went, but San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco, okay was allowed into his office for the first time just to gather a couple of things, okay, that he needed for the first time in months. And everything is frozen there. People's coffee mugs with whatever was left in them was left there to continue to grow. People's desks, their pens, their papers, whatever they were leaving, it's just a frozen ca cave in these big offices and they're being led, allowed in a couple at a time to ensure no one uh, encounters somebody else in these offices um, is just an interesting sight to hear about, to think about. I mean, I remember the days of corporate and going into the office. But, uh, you know, that is a interesting, um, an interesting look on things and how things have paused. Uh, of course, my nephew, who... Um, lives a charmed life. Let's just call it a charmed life. Okay, had
the package, you know, cal you know, to avoid por porch pirates, all the packages are delivered to the office, and his, you know, wine vault thing, his wine of the month club, because came there in March and was still in the office, he didn't take it home with him, and you know, we're talking hundred dollar bottles of wine, not not the kind I buy at Trader Joe's for three bucks. Hey, Carrie. Pat in the peanut gallery. Why gap lawsuits could usher in new commercial real estate terms? As retail location lang locations languish, both landlords and tenants are trying to get creative. In some cases, the courts have got involved. Uh, we've talked about how uh, gap is being sued by Brookfield, Simon, and others to pay rent. Um, and uh, even maintain their Midtown location. Uh, and some are trying to get them to sue them to uh, force them to reopen locations. Um, and there's a difficult terrain ahead for both retailers and landlords. While some face court, others are trying to ink agreements to em temporarily pause rent with the understanding that things will pick up in the future. Some players are also renegotiating leases to encompass future unprecedented crisis. Put together, it points to a future commercial real estate contracts having a new look. Rent abatement has been a major topic of concern among physical retailers since the onset of the virus outbreak. Some landlords have offered rent deferrals, the need to be paid back eventually. However, they typically avoid abatement, as it essentially means full or partial free rent for the tenant. While coverage of rent abatement has been predominantly featured about national businesses such as Starbucks, Cheesecake Factory, um, TJ Maxx. Uh, the biggest chunks of requests is those relying on physical services. Uh, a survey of 3,300 shopping center owners concluded the majority of rent abatement requests were in fact made by salons, with 100% of firms interviewed citing them as their biggest portion of rent requests. Next is fitness-related retailers like gyms, and um, national brands and franchises made up an average of 12.2% of least term change Um And the other thing is that they're looking for changes to is the force majeure clauses um, and the unforeseeable circumstances that prevent them from fulfilling the contract to include public health related government mandated shutdowns okay so there is a the the courts are going to get involved in that and uh, likely uh, congress again i think there's going to be backstop uh insurance with the federal government on this like 911 terrorism insurance hey carrie and kath great to have you with us good to have you all with us tonight this is good news. Lazy Boy is restarting its factories. And I'm not talking for the Lazy Boy. Lazy Boy said it's ramping up furniture production as states around the country ease restrictions and consumers begin patronizing reopened stores. The manufacturer and retailer of reclining chairs, sofas, and other home furnitures, furnishings is moving towards 80% of prior year production levels as July grows near. Uh... They had closed the U.S. factories in March, but are getting them back open and getting, you know, up to that 80% level, which is what I've uh, said we're going to see for a lot of things. Uh, top economists want to swap those $600 a week unemployment benefits with up to $400 a week. A group of well-known economists has proposed replacing the $600... Uh, um, a week uh, enhancement to unemployment benefits with $400 a week after July. Um, unemployment benefits would replace 80 to 90 percent of lost earnings for lower wage to median wage workers and less for higher er earners. This policy may um, help both Democrats and Republicans. Um, Democrats uh, have tried to get the thing extended um, where's the other number here? But they're also trying to get a work back to work uh, benefit.
You wouldn't want to, you know, even Powell is saying this week that you don't want to go all the way to zero. Um, the benefit would be based on up to 40% of one's prior wages capped at $400 so that out with about 80% of prior income. You know, uh, figuring that an average state's unemployment benefits are 40 to 50%, they'd end out with 80 to 90% of their prior income on unemployment versus their full income. So they'd still be, they'd be below versus above, which a lot of people are above now. Um, and um, states unable to handle the formula, which, the, you know, many states' unemployment systems are fairly archaic, would only administer a flat $200 a week uh, payment in its place. Um, and they would offer payroll subsidies like the PPP or a tax credit to encourage reemployment. So there's things on both sides of that that are good. Well, Michelle, part of it is in, in continuing keeping people, you know, if the jobs aren't there, okay, and the economy isn't there, um, you are going to collapse whole other portions of the economy rather fast. You're going to collapse uh, rental economy. You're going to collapse car, you know, the whole, you're going to have all these cars repossessed. You're going to have people filing personal bankruptcy because they aren't paying their credit card bills. There's so many things. It's a big circle the economy and it's tricky it's not perfect none of this is perfect um, but you're st I I still think there's a decent chance we get a lot of people back to work by the fall um, but you're still even the best economists are saying looking at you know instead of looking at 20 30 percent unemployment you're still looking at 10 percent unemployment which is much higher than we had so um, because the other thing that people are learning in this and even you are learning, is how to get more done with less people, okay? Which is an important lesson because you do need to be more efficient to grow your way out of this. And companies big and small that are surviving this are looking at that. So you're looking at how to do more with less. Yes, I have lots of thoughts, Rick, and I have your email in my inbox, and I was going to give you a ring. I have lots of thoughts on rent, and, um, you know, landlords are making deals, okay, you know, with long-term tenants. They are, they are making deals. You know, there, there is talk of, of rents in the short term going down anywhere 5 to 10 percent, some more, um, you know, again, but also looking at locking in um, uh, people. You know, I have one landlord that has made me a very good offer now that, you know, if I go back to their offer, their first offer at the beginning of the pandemic um, wasn't really good at all, okay? And even their middle offer uh, wasn't really good. Um, but I kept on ignoring the various offers, and uh, they are, the offer sitting on my desk right now it is 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 much more uh, is much more palatable, okay. Um, you know, and and that's it, it, you know part of it is it is also the expectation with landlords that this is not a win or lose game, okay. This is not only one side wins, okay. There has to be things in it that it becomes a mutual long term relationship, okay. And I and and. Two out of three of my landlords really get that. The other one's a jerk, and, and I'm looking for a deal out of that moving forward. But, um, and I think there'll be available real estate for me to find a deal elsewhere for that. But, but most of them get, okay, that this is a long term. If I'm healthy, they're healthy, okay? Um, and they've worked a lot, especially if they deal with any national tenants and things. There's been a lot of things. Everybody has some pain in this. And so um, if we uh, all are in it together, and we're all in it for the long term, we're all fighting for the long term, um, we'll get there. So, I mean, I'm um, actually quite impressed with the current offer that's on my desk. But it wasn't, it wasn't the first and it wasn't the second.
um, that got us there. But patience got us there. Patience got us there. And I'm a pretty level, patient guy. You know, I don't get anxiety over much, anything. Um, and I just, you know, deal with it and I move forward. So, um, back to school, maybe. As summer rolls on, the pandemic promises to interfere with one of retail's most important shopping seasons, back to school, which is huge for our business. I mean, we do a huge kids business and back to school is big. Um, this uh, is talking about unpredictability into a once reliable shopping season. Last year, retailers were expecting consumer spending on K-12 back to school items to reach $26.2 billion or almost $700 per household. It's a passage from carefree summer activities or summer jobs to scholarly pursuits that sends many families to stores together. But it's unlikely to look the same this year, m many experts say. Back to school is traditionally a very exciting time for kids and a somewhat stressful time for families, transitioning the change of pace from the summer break back to the regular rhythm of life. Uh, like many other things this year, back to school is going to look different. Um, retailers that usually grapple with, that usually benefit with back to school season are already grappling with this uncertainty about the return. Last week, for example, Children's Place CEO warned analysts that the back to school season, extremely important in kids apparel, is already complicated the by the fact that many school districts haven't announced fall plans. And that's true. My sister um, is the crisis counselor at one of the largest school districts in the country. I forget whether she's five, seven, somewhere in there, uh, north of Houston. She's one of two that's a crisis counselor for a district of some 60,000 students. And um, they were anxiously awaiting the Texas State uh, Teacher Association's rules for reopening schools in the fall and they basically said do whatever you want but we expect you to be open schools will be reopening or you can do virtual or you can do whatever you want um which was really not the kind of direction uh that they were expecting out of them they were expecting some clearer guidance um So, you know, it, it is going to be different, uh, and the uncertainty of it, and the uncertainty of it being, you know, that it's going to stay full-time. I know various districts are talking about half-time school, you know, a weekend or every other day to keep down uh, students. So it'll be interesting, and that will affect kids' stores. Yeah, exactly, Michelle. Um, you know, it, it will affect kids' stores, um, uh, with uh, back to school clothing, but the saving grace for kids stores is it may affect the the fanciness of what people are buying, but kids are always growing, so uh, they will always um, that is an area that will always be strong because there isn't uh, that you can't just stuff them into the same thing every year, so um, that is a saving grace. Sephora launches on Instagram checkout with over 80 brands. Sephora on Wednesday opened up Instagram checkout through a digital storefront that allows shoppers to buy products directly from a user's Instagram feed or stories. The beauty retailer is selling more than 80 brands on Instagram checkout, including Drunk Elephant, Milk Makeup, and others. And shoppers will be able to make purchases either on Sephora's Instagram account or on several of its brand partners' accounts without leaving the Instagram platform. Instagram shoppers who are loyalty members will still get perks, including earning Beauty Insider points. There you go. Hey, Joanne, never be sorry. I know you're a loyal watcher and you catch the replay. North Face, Patagonia, REI, Boycott, Facebook, after calls from civil rights groups. Ben & Jerry's, Eddie Bauer, and Canadian Outdoors Company, Arctic, whatever, I'm not doing that right, have joined Stop Hate for Profit campaign, pausing paid advertising on Facebook and Instagram. Ben & Jerry's will pause beginning July 1st, while Eddie Bauer and others will pause immediately through the end of July, per tweets from the brand. 
Outdoor goods retailers North Face, Patagonia, and REI joined a boycott of Facebook organized by civil rights groups that want the social media giant to crack down on hate speech and misinformation. The brands announced their plans in separate tweets marked with Stop for Hate for Profit hashtag. We're in, we're out at Facebook, North Face said in a June 19th tweet and followed up to say the boycott includes all Facebook-owned properties such as Instagram. For 82 years, we've put people over profits. We're pulling all Facebook, Instagram advertising for the month of July. REI said later that day, uh, Patagonia is proud to join the Stop Hate for Profit campaign. Uh, the company tweeted on uh, June 21st. The Anti-Defamation League, National Association of Advancement of Colored People, and Color for Change, Common Sense, Free Press, and Sleeping Giants are partners in the Stop Hate for Profit campaign. They asked advertisers to pull their spending for Facebook in July and publish recommendations on how the social network can address hate speech. So that is kind of interesting and in how they're doing that. Facebook's up later in the ad. Uh, well, I'm going to come to them next. Uh, next after next. Hang on a second. Where am I in my thing? GNC files for bankruptcy. Not a big surprise with the number of stores they still have in malls, but they could close up to 1,200 stores. GNC filed for Chapter 11 Tuesday with plans to reorganize or alternately sell itself in bankruptcy. The retailer has a plan backed by major lenders that will provide $100 million in new uh, financing as well as exit financing for a reorganization that would turn ownership to lenders. The retailer said in a press release that it plans to close 800 to 1,200 of its stores while also investing in its omni-channel capabilities and branding. They hope to exit uh, bankruptcy in the fall. Um, in the period ending March 31st, uh, GNC's revenue took a 16% hit year over year, and it racked up a $166 million operating loss. The company's debt was downgraded by S&P in late March as the pandemic was accelerating, and uh, GNC couldn't generate enough cash from its visit business to make a major debt payment. So not a big surprise. Uh, GNC's got a lot, a lot of stores. 5,200 stores in the U.S., uh, 1,600 of which are stored within a store at Rite Aid. Um, new Amazon Counterfeit Crimes Unit. The new Amazon Counterfeit Crimes Unit aims for zero, zero fakes on Amazon. Amazon announced that it has gathered a team of former federal prosecutors, investigators, and data analysts for a global counterfeit crimes unit. The group will aid Amazon's existing effort battling sales of fake through its site with a goal of driving down the number to zero. While the e-commerce giant said its priority remains prevention, the new team will investigate cases where a bad actor has attempted to evade Amazon systems and listed a counterfeit in violation of Amazon's policies. That will make it easier to get results through civil and criminal legal action, the company said. Uh, the problem is, you know, Amazon acknowledges that even when consumers realize they're buying a knockoff, it's o they think it's okay. I mean, again, to your Instagram followers and everything, um, so we'll have to see uh, what they really do with that. What do they really do with that? Because, uh, you know, there's, that's great talk and everything else, but we've seen that before from those types, from Amazons and Ebays and everybody else. But I remain, like Julie, the eternal optimist on it. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission last week said that businesses subject that uh, with the American Disabilities Act may not mandate workers to submit to a COVID-19 antibody test as it constitutes a medical examination under ADA standards. Temperature checks and tests for active infections of COVID-19, the disease, are allowed. 
So no antibody tests, but other simple measures are allowed. Facebook in the news for something good. We had them for something bad. We're stopping. But this is for small business. This is for you. You don't think you know social media. You don't think you know Facebook. You want to be better at it? Facebook is launching the Summer of Support, a program to provide digital marketing training to businesses. With more businesses looking to shift their operations online in order to mitigate the impacts of COVID-19 shutdowns, Facebook has announced a new six-week series of digital marketing education courses starting this week in order to provide key tips, insights, information, and support primarily for small businesses. We're bringing free digital marketing education to business all over the country. So join us for six weeks. Six! Not one! Not two! Not three! Six! That's like half a dozen! That's like half a dozen donuts! Okay? This is free! And all the sign-up information. So this week is the changing world. Uh, it's not about the health crisis. Innovation itself has put us in a permanent state of flux for your business to succeed. It's important to understand how to, un to respond to the new reality. Next week is resilience. Sometimes opportunity can look like a setback. The businesses that succeed are the ones that can turn a setback into a new way forward. June 6th through, July 6th through 12th is reinvention. That one transform, transformative opportunity might be just out of reach. July 13th through 19th, reemergence. Once a crisis ends, how do you enter the new landscape? And July 20th to 26th, customers and commerce. And... July 27th to 31st, what we are all about, community. Okay, that is all coming your way. That'll get posted. How to sign up, how to do it, will all be posted later tonight to NART's private Facebook group. And then tomorrow, you'll find it at NARTS.org slash resale strong. NARTS.org slash resale strong is where you will find that resource and how to sign up for those classes, which are free, free. Just saying, the summer of George. This is so cool. Okay, so I told you I was going to tell you about one of Resale World's clients that's in the news today. Okay, since not only did they sponsor us with a coaster for the Scotch class, coaster for the Scotch class, a mug that I thought was a scotch glass, but I was incredibly informed that I could not use this for scotch. Okay. This would contain too much scotch, and I was not allowed to use this for scotch or any other alcoholic beverages. But we are appreciative of a resale world. And one of their customers is in the news tonight. Okay, and it goes and the headline is. One of a kind store adds virtual option. An unusual store, an, excuse me, an unusual 50 year old store. Okay, Russ, do you know who I'm talking about yet? Does anyone know who I'm talking about yet? An unusual 50 year old store. Who am I talking about? Okay, Cassandra got it. The peanut gallery knows exactly who I'm talking about. Does anybody else know who I'm talking about? They attract one million shoppers annually is now selling online. Unclaimed baggage, which features a wide assortment of lost items that airlines and other travel businesses have been unable to reunite with their former owners, has unveiled its new e-commerce site. Similar to the 50,000 square foot unclaimed baggage store, the online shop features a wide assortment of goods from unclaimed designer sunglasses and headphones to iPads and heirloom watches. New items are added regularly. Located in Scottsboro, Alabama, unclaimed baggage is the country's only merchant of unclaimed and lost airline baggage and its contents. Besides clothing, footwear, formal wear, and electronics, shoppers might find anything from a suit of armor and a 40 care emerald to the to a Chinese dragon kite and a puppet created at Henson's creative workshop 
Our customers have long requested an online version of our in-store shopping experience, said Unclaimed Baggage CEO Brian Owens. We're glad that as part of our 50th anniversary, shoppers are now able to experience the thrill of the hunt online. Unclaimed Baggage also runs a philanthropic program, Reclaim for Good, that provides charities with millions of dollars worth of unsellable clothes, medical supplies, and equipment, such as wheelchairs, Reclaim for Good, Good's Loved Luggage, Initiative has also supported thousands of foster children by providing personalized suitcases to replace the garbage bags many typically use to transport their bargain. So, quite an article, and to uh, Mary Ann's point, look at the. Look, I, I don't. I hope you can see the packaging that they are using. Okay, that is branding. In their boxing, I am. I'm still the cheap guy on on boxing and shipping, although I've got a really cute. Your order has shipped email, so if you haven't ordered from me, you get a really really cute. Your order has shipped, but they've got really cute uh, packaging and unclaimed uh, baggage boxes to make it look like you're getting uh, all of that. Yes, oh um, Michelle, this place in Alabama, we should get together and take a road trip there. Okay, part of the Neo Road Tour, once restrictions are lifted. Um, because Cassandra's tired of me and wants to get rid of me. Protocol Plano, Texas. All right. Yes, what people leave behind, Michelle, is just freaking amazing. All right, what else we got here tonight? Mnuchin, our buddy Stevie Boy, Stevie Boy, says stimulus may pass Congress in July to boost economy. Um, the administration is discussing another stimulus package with lawmakers that could be passed in the end of July uh, to continue to revive the U.S. economy. Um, the Trump administration has discussed a $1 trillion measure as a way to stimulate job growth. That, and he also reiterated that he and the president are not inclined to shut the economy down uh, a second time, even if there is a resurgence of cases. The shutdown in March and April left more than 40 million people out of work. And they're considering important for you, Russ, whether they're going to get you another round of uh, stimulus payments to pay for that uh, flooring that you need. Uh, several Republican senators stood up at a meeting and urged Mnuchin to be cautious in doing more deficit spending and to narrow down any aid. Um, the center of the current debate is whether to send a second round of payments, uh, whether there will be another PPP, um, and uh, how it will play out, but they're really trying to get one more bill in before politics and re-election becomes the big thing. Let's go to Alabama or Resale Island. I'm with you. Yeah, I really do want to see them. I'm really sad that in my trips to Alabama that I have not gotten there. But, I mean, once you've been to, to, like, Sonia's place in Alabama, I mean, do you really need to go to any place else? Let's just, let's just say, I, I feel like I, after visiting Sonia, am better than before. I'm just saying. You know, but, you know, it would be uh, unreal to go visit um, Unclaimed Baggage. I would like to go there. The peanut gallery would like to go there with my credit card. But now they can virtually. Oh, shoot. The peanut gallery is shopping right now. Um, uh, let's see what else we got going on. Um, there's been lots of direction to, to banks given today about deducting the idle advance amounts from forgiveness amounts. Okay. Um... Uh, I'm just reading, scanning this through from my buddy at the SBA. Yeah, there's nothing good in this. Hang on a second. I'm just reading that. 
making sure that I dinner's ready oh my hang on a second yes Sonia stores are incredible I am blessed um, to uh, work for Sonia and dine with Sonia and Sonia keeps on promising me if I come down again she will feed me fried okra I mean but dinner's right over there but Julie wants to go to unclaimed baggage with my credit card too uh, but Texas is where I want to be I like I'm gonna I just got new time the the Lexus was just serviced today Mickey took care of it Lexus is all ready to hit the road got new tires on it the only thing it is they haven't brought back their cleaning crew yet so my car isn't clean um, but uh, they're working on getting, they're still working with the limited staff at Lexus. But uh, it is roadworthy and the tires are brand new. Or at least two of them are. Uh, there's nothing good in that. Okay. So we'll cover that another time. So that sort of wraps us up for tonight, folks. You know that all these resources, including the Facebook class uh sign up will be posted here tonight live in the narts facebook group within the hour live in the hour you will find it in the narts private facebook group but you can share it with everybody tomorrow because by tomorrow it will be at narts.org slash resale strong narts.org slash resale strong you will find the um resources that i talked about here tonight including this video this video will be there Share it with everybody, anybody that you know, regardless of what kind of business they have. From Plano to Providence, you can share that, okay? And we want you to because we want to get everybody, regardless of what type of business they're in, to the other side, with or without their baggage, okay? Uh, we're going to get everybody to the other side of this, okay? Pink calculator and all, we're all going there, people. You had a question about your situation, your PPP, your rent, your situation. Just email me, Neil, N-E-I-L, at ECIstores.com. N-E-I-L at ECIstores.com. I'm going to give you an advance notice. Tomorrow night is a special episode. We have a special occasion tomorrow night. Okay, bring your cake tomorrow night. We have a special edition tomorrow night at more eight than ish more eight than ish tomorrow night i don't have a meeting just before it okay we have more eight than ish we have a very special episode tomorrow night so you're not going to want to miss it okay and we'll see if any of you can come up with what that special episode is before it happens okay but bring your cake with you we start every episode every episode we start with the good morning good night book the good morning good night book Tonight we're on page 96. The world changes. The ground shifts. We still make plans. We still find gifts. Good morning. Our good night tonight is good night. The world changes. The earth spins. We grieve our losses. We eke out wins. Good night. Okay, there's your graphic for tonight. I am Neil Abrams, and I do like a good wedding. I do like a good party, even a bar mitzvah. I'm telling you. They're coming back. We're going to do the horror. But until then, folks, I will see you again tomorrow night at more 8 than ish. I am Neil Abramson. You can email me at neil at ecistores.com. That is N-E-I-L at ecistores.com. Nana did do well at the doctor. She is very proud of herself at how she did at the doctors today. She, the doctor, is impressed with the surgeon, I mean, they have a big ego to begin with, but this surgeon is like, I did something, she doesn't even have to do physical therapy. He canceled it. No physical therapy. Why bother, he said. Thanks for asking, Kelly. Gardening is the, answer. the gardening is her therapy. That is what she has been doing and working that, that hand, uh, that arm, and she is doing uh, phenomenal. No, it is not about conference, Michelle, but you should register. Get registered. There's going to be special things for those that register before July 15th. So if you are not registered, get that $200 out. Get somebody's credit card, not mine, out and register. But we're going to talk about something special tomorrow night. Be here or be square. But until then, know that you and you 
And especially, yes, you, you, I'm pointing at you, are not alone running this store. I'll see you tomorrow night, everybody. It's dinner time.